Hey, I'm James Burnham, and I am doing a new segment on my YouTube channel where I interview men and women, and I talk to them about the, what they will no longer tolerate. You know, 75% of all second marriages fail, more than 75%. And I think it's due to the fact that many of us don't take the time to really delve into what we failed to get out of the past relationship that we were in and our responsibility in how we failed to get that. We often cast blame. And when we do that, we fail to learn and then we move right back into the same space. So this is a fascinating uh, conversation because this person, Chrissy, when I was interviewing her, she was able to give me some real clear insights in what she learned she needed to do going forward and how she failed to show up properly in her own marriage. Uh, learned, so I, I will tell you this. Um, when, I, when we got married, I was 33 hmm. and I had Not too young. zero boundaries, no boundaries. Like I just, I, I was naive and yeah. I, um, I was, I had the belief that, that I have the power in me to create an amazing marriage, to be an amazing wife and incredible, everything he wants for me, then, then we'll have this amazing marriage because why wouldn't he adore me if I'm adorable, you know? So it was codependent. She's saying, why wouldn't he adore me if I am adorable? And she's saying, I can be everything he needs and everything he wants. So she's seeking her value and validation in this relationship by being whatever he wants. And that's no way to enter into any relationship because you are immediately now open to the whims and fancies of this person in front of you and you're gonna to have to do everything that they want in order to keep them happy. And you're seeing yourself as the person that is delivering happiness to them and your happiness is found in making them happy. Really, really, really bad place to be. That's where I was. That's what I, that's how I delivered in my marriage. I thought if I can just be whatever it is you want, you're awesome. I'll be whatever it is you want and I'll keep you happy. So if you're unhappy, that's a reflection on me. If you are not happy with what I'm doing, that's a reflection on me. If you are, you know, anything going wrong in your life, that's a reflection on me. You cannot win. And then you want me to do these things. I hate doing those things, but I'm going to do them. This is what she's talking about when she's talking about boundaries. And it became a huge impact in her relationship. So in this next piece, right, we're talking about this girl that has decided that she will do, you know, Chrissy's like, I know I can be a good wife because I can just be adorable. I can do everything this man wants of me. And so she's building herself up into a place where she's saying, I will deliver whatever you want. And in the process of that, there is a, there's an attrition that it takes on your body. And she begins to get help because she's not happy by being everything for this man. And so she talks about the first time she set a boundary with him. It was her very first boundary. It's astonishing, right? Never set a boundary at all. She was completely doing whatever he wanted. And this is what happens. And then anyway, so that from that experience, um, it turned into our, that was the first boundary that I had ever set. So so obviously you can probably, maybe some people can just assume that that is, that actually brought more conflict in our marriage because of our dynamics. We're now changing. Right. And it was something that he's oh, I get it. <laughs> so he, um, it got worse actually. It was, and I just tried so hard to help him understand this is, this is all I'm asking. I don't, I just don't want the name. I just don't want this piece. But um, can we come to, a, can we have this conversation without this piece? And it just, it got worse and where's the name calling and, and just, it got heated. And then, and it was, I think it was just the dynamics changing that was threatening to him. Um, she says, I think it was just the dynamics changing that was threatening him and he was becoming aggravated and frustrated. And absolutely that's gonna happen, right? If you're in a relationship and you have never set boundaries, you have never allowed this person to see from you what you need and what you want in your life to feel sustained and supported and a partner in this relationship, you are going to encounter resistance for sure. It's scary. It can be hard, particularly because 
you're coming from a place, if you're doing this, you're coming from a place where you did not believe you had the self-worth and value to stand up and allow someone, expect someone to treat you in the way that you feel you need to be treated. And so this transition is hard. And so it, you, you, you're witnessing the story of a person who took the first courageous step in owning their own value and self-worth. And the escalation of, con of conflict in the relationship increases. It doesn't diminish when she shows up and says, hey, I've got value. And this is what's interesting, right? She is now allowing this man to see her for the first time. He's never seen her. He has seen the visual portrayal of who she is. But who he really needs to see is inside. And he has not seen the inside of this woman because she has been fully giving herself to him and doing whatever he wants. She knows who he is because she does whatever he wants. He does not know her. He is in love with a apparition, right? And so in the process of doing this and her showing up, he is frustrated. The person I married is not this. And there are couples that will resolve this because they'll see, oh, there's enough value here. I like this. And they can have that conversation. She's talking about difficult conversations. But when you set your boundaries, there will be some people that do not make it through. I personally didn't. My ex set some boundaries that she wanted in her life that were, for me, at the end of the day, I was like, this is undeliverable. I cannot be expected to do this for you. Um, I felt like it, it was, it, it just was not tolerable, as was this case for her. And with her boundaries that she was setting and me not following them, my ex didn't want me around either. What happened is we showed up for each other. We're like, oh my gosh, look at this. Now, initially, the boundaries that were set for me, I was like, okay, I'll do this. And I did it for as long as I could until I realized, oh, I've got some boundaries of my own. And that's when everything broke down, right? I had some boundaries that I could do. Same thing here, right? Her ex, when he had, when she placed boundaries upon him, realized, well, I'm not following that. I already know what I want and you're not providing it for me and this isn't gonna work. Hence the dissolution of the marriage. However, the difference when you approach it from this perspective as she's looking at it from this perspective of what did I need to do? She was looking at it not as in, he was making me do all these things. He took advantage of me. He did all these horrible things to me. She self-reflects and says, I was not showing up. I was not telling him what I wanted. I was not being a partner. And that transforms the pain and frustration that you feel from the breakdown of a relationship into something that you can navigate the troubled waters and find a way through it because the path is something you can control. It's yourself. So if you're in a situation with somebody and you have given your whole and all of your existence to this person, the first thing I want you to do is get some help because that's not what we should be doing. That's not a healthy relationship. The codependency is going to destroy you. And then do what you need to do. This woman calls, calls it setting boundaries. I call it showing up as who I am. Whatever it is you need to do so that you can express yourself and be witnessed and say, I will only tolerate this kind of action in my life. I won't tolerate these things. This is what I want. That makes it really powerful. And so she calls it boundaries. You can call it whatever you want, but you have to come from a place of self-worth, of deep and abiding love for yourself. And that's what she's demonstrating. And I think it's a powerful thing. So hopefully you can learn from Chrissy, as I did, and apply it to your life. This next video coming up is another one where I wonder what this person I'm interviewing will tolerate in relationships. I hope you enjoy it. I'm James Burnham. Thanks for joining me.